New, 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 new. I'm trying to sing that song. Yeah. That industrial song. So first up, first up. Uh, reminder, Adabox will be shipping in March. We will run out way before March because a lot of people signed up for Adabox during the holidays. So go to adabox.com if there is a si sign up available. You should do it. And I promise you it'll be probably one of our best Adaboxes ships in March. And that's yep. all I can say about it. Sign up. Coming soon, uh, we've been showing previews of this board and more. We now have a sign-up page for Clue. Yay, our upcoming board. I'm still doing a revision or two on it, but so far so good. I'm working on this for a month or so. And uh, we've got the new Clue board. So this is an NRF52 840 uh, Bluetooth LE Blue Fruit board. Uh, it's got a 1.3-inch color TFT with two buttons. It's micro bit shaped and size is compatible with micro bit accessories but is it just renderings or is it actually real it's real it's real but it's it's fuzzy and it's out of focus but it's it's coming into focus okay. now um we get, got two buttons on the front and it's got the same micro bit connector you can you know use with micro bit accessories it's not gonna be red i don't think it's so. not gonna be red no. uh it's gonna some things are gonna move around or um, maybe. Yeah, maybe who knows uh and then uh on the back it's got a bevy of sensors so a microphone Barometric pressure, humidity, temperature, magnetometer, accelerometer, um, as well as uh, some uh, storage flash for data logging or for running CircuitPython, um, connected for the 1.3 inch TFT, battery connector. Oh, why is it going out of lock? There's so much going on here. I have to, I have to lock it. Okay, now it's maybe it's locked. All right, um, and then there's also a STEM IQT connector for other external sensors. What's nice about this is it's, it's got the same sort of BLE low energy, Bluetooth low energy capabilities of the micro bit. Oh, I'm sorry, in the front there's a color and proximity sensor, um, but it's a lot more powerful. It's a uh, Cortex M4 running at 64 megahertz with a t like a megabyte of flash, 256K of RAM. So it can run TensorFlow, it can run Arduino, it can run CircuitPython, and uh, hopefully it'll also have make code support at some point this year. Okay. Sign up, coming soon, it's not out yet. Next up. Next up, we have, I'll talk about this a lot more next week, but we have a, a 9 DOF sensor featuring some STM chips. So this is uh, two chips in one breakout, which is kind of a new thing, I haven't done that yet, but they go so well together, like peanut butter and jelly. Um, let me see if I can find one. That's weird. Oh, I don't know. Well, I have gigantic photos of them if you need it. Yeah. So, um, I don't know where my breakout went. It has, uh, in the middle top, it's got an LSM 6DS33. It's a three axis accelerometer plus a three axis gyro. So it's considered an IMU. And then below that, it has the three axis magnetometer, the LIST 3 MDL. So together, and they're kind of put next to each other, but you know, uh, oriented in the right way so that they have the X, Y, and Z going in the same direction and um, they make up a 9 off sensor. So these uh, sensor sets, these are a fairly good set of sensors from ST. They're pretty recent, um, they're very affordable, and uh, much better than like the MPU 6050. They're much newer than that and so much more stable. Uh, great for getting uh, full 9 off orientation data out. And um, we just hooked it up so you can get the I squared C data out and um, with four mounting holes, so it's nice and secure, uh, cables so you can quickly plug it in um, to get uh, data through a STEM IQT connector. And then um, if you want to use uh, the interrupt pins, there's a bunch of interrupt pins on the top there. You can solder it and use it in a breadboard. Okay, next up. Next up we have the Open MV Cam. This uh, is a neat, also STM32 H7 uh, series chip, a very powerful chip. This time it is running MicroPython and can do all sorts of vision recognition projects. So OpenMV has had a couple of iterations, um, each one improving, getting faster and better. Um, this is the latest iteration. Uh, it's very affordable for all the capabilities you have with it. Um, you can code it in MicroPython, which is really neat. All the machine vision stuff is done in C, so it's really fast, um, but then you can do the, you know, the more complex um, like functionalities that you want that would you know, be very difficult to write in C, you can write them in MicroPython, which I think is really neat. So this is a, it doesn't run CircuitPython, only runs MicroPython, but um, I think it's a great addition to the family. And you would pair this, you, you could have it, uh, there's breakouts, you can use this to activate uh, relays or motors, or you can pair this with another microcontroller and have it send the data, like what it recognizes or whether there's a green shape and where in the vision space it is and have um, that data analyzed on another microcontroller. So a really fun all-in-one um, open source machine vision system. 
that can run MicroPython on a very fast processor. Okay, another breakout uh, that we have is the MCP uh, 4728. Looks a lot like the other one because I'm trying to stick to the same STEM IQT form factor. Uh, this is a quad I squared C DAC. So we actually in the store have a mono DAC, a single analog output. This is a four analog output. Um, this isn't fast enough for you to like create like high speed sine waves and like do audio synthesis with. Um, I squared C isn't really fast enough to do that uh, satisfactorily. Um, but that said, you could, you know, fairly quickly, uh, if you use it like at one megahertz I squared C speeds, you could, you know, set all the outputs, uh, you know, four bytes per transaction or so. So you could do maybe, you know, 10 kilohertz or something um, update rate. And uh, what's really neat about this quad I squared C DAC is, uh, first off, it has internal analog reference. So the internal analog reference is 2.048 volts. Um, temperature compensated and if you want you can double that to 4.096 and so even if your uh, VCC is 3 volts or maybe 3.6 and maybe it's 3 or you're running it off a 5 volt system but it drops down to 4.5 and so you have these you know it, the the voltage power voltage is not consistent um, using these internal references you can have a very solid analog reference output which is super nice and also there is an EEPROM in there so when you uh, set the analog voltages and then write the EEPROM which takes a millisecond or two next time you power up the chip it'll automatically set those outputs on the pin so you don't have to like initialize it when it first starts up it'll come up with the last values that you programmed into the EEPROM um, which is you know pretty nice um, extra for a uh, quad DAC so handy if you need something where you're like oh, I need some reference voltages or I want to bias something or I want to get feedback into an op amp or control uh, not a very fast moving analog signal and I want four of them next up some uh, adorable silicone wires these look just like uh, normal jumper wires but they use silicone co coated covered wires um, so they're really flexible um, these are a little more durable than the PVC coated ones and also I think they'd be good in like a high temperature usage like if you are worried you're going to attach these to something warm or hot like a soldering iron uh, they're um, much more durable in that case I can show these off so you know they're, they're a little thicker so they're not super flexible but they are flexible you don't have to worry about breaking or cracking the PVC and they come in 10 sets of four colors uh, 10 black, 10 red, 10 blue, and 10 yellow. Okay, next up. Next up we have a couple DIN rail products. People like DIN rail. I don't use DIN rail that much, but I can see how it could be useful. It's, it's a handy way to mount stuff. So well, the first one is a 16-pin uh, IDC to terminal block adapter. Uh, you have, uh, you know, even have uh, these cables in the store. They're 16-pin IDCs, two by eight. You plug them in, you get terminal blocks, 1 through 16, very easy, very simple, and you can mount it onto a DIN rail, uh, slide it back and forth, and then when you know where you want it, you can, um, you can crank down on it maybe and, and, and more permanently attach it or glue it in place. Um, but, you know, this is very handy, and people have asked for these where they would connect this to um, my controller or a Raspberry Pi, and then this goes to some other wiring setup. Likewise, we have this sort of like generic, the same seller that had the terminal block also had this sort of generic holder. It's I think like 80 by 160 millimeters, 120 millimeters, something like that. Um, we have a diagram. It's, it's just, you know, a, a cutout shape. You can have a PCB or really any kind of electronics you want to keep in here. Look, you can put your clue board in it, glue it in place, and now you can have anything held on um, a DIN rail. And then there's this little, uh, locking thing. get on the clue train so you can easily <laughs> remove it and then when you have it where you want it you clip it down and then it comes with uh, bolts even that you can bolt it into place uh, through these holes I so choo, choo, choose you I know this is a little, <laughs> little slidey thing so okay. this generic din rail enclosure might be handy for people um, don't forget to check the dimensions to see the internal dimensions because there's a little there's a little round notch on each side here all right uh, next up, we have um, these uh, NX, NXT slash Mindstorm Lego compatible connectors. So 
If you've ever used Mindstorms or, or Lego, you know, robotics or sensors, uh, and I'll show these on the overhead because it's, it's tough to see, but they have what looks a lot like a, a Ethernet or telephone jack, but you'll notice that the little notch thing is not in the center. It's actually off to the side. So you can't use everyday RJ12 or RJ6 or whatever connectors. You have to use um, special connectors that have that notch in the same location. And that's what these are. So you see these are um, equivalent and they are compatible. Um, and then you can solder to these or use them uh, in your breadboard at the right angle. So if you would like to uh, either use this to connect a custom sensor or motor to an EV3, for example, or you have a Mindstorm motor, for example, or a sensor, and you're like, oh, I want to connect this to um, my Arduino or Raspberry Pi, you can connect it the other way around. The pins on these are power ground, I squared C clock, I squared C data, and an analog pin. And I think for motors, there might be encoder. It might be a little bit different. So for motors or, or sensors, check out online. There's tons of tutorials on how to um, make custom connectivity to um, NXP, NXT motors and sensors and vice versa. So this is just the mechanical connector to get you started. We have two analog panel meters. These are little analog panel meters. And uh, I thought, you know, it's kind of good to have one that's just plain voltage and plain uh, current that can also do higher voltage and current. I think we have a three volt and a five volt. And so I thought, well, we should go up to 15. But if we're going to 15, we might as well get um, one that's uh, positive or negative. So this one can go negative 15 to positive 15. This can go negative one amp to one amp. So one, these are good if you have a circuitry that is um, has a plus minus five, plus minus 10, plus minus 12 volt uh, power. So some analog circuitry or synthesizers use that. Um, so this is kind of nice because it can show you the full range. For the current, it might be good for, um, you know, you, you want to measure something where the current can going, be going in or out, say a, a battery system where you could be charging it and then discharging it so current can go either direction. Uh, that's one good reason to have this. Or maybe just, you know, you want to, um, if you wire it up wrong, you still want to have, um, or if you want to philosophically think of the current going negative or positive, uh, because you want like the ground to stay the same on all your meters. Um, this could be nice because it has, again, bi-directional, either positive and negative. Yeah, and a couple different types here. On the back, yeah, you can just uh, connect up to these terminals. Very easy to use. And then you can, uh, if they're not perfectly centered, just tweak the little um, screw on the front. Okay, next up. A trans uh, flash slash micro SD card extender. We have these with long cables. This one is really cute because it's just a little bit longer. Um, which I thought would be handy because we're always kind of like digging into our Raspberry Pis to, to get the SD card out while we're doing prototyping. Yeah. Um, this just plugs in and just gives you like an inch. That's it. Good if it's inside of something. And like yeah, if it's in a case and it, you know, it, it kind of extends out flat. So it's like if there's a notch to remove the SD, this just keeps going past it. And then, you know, also if you want to tap into... Uh, micro SD card uh, pins. This could also be very handy, but it's inexpensive and pretty useful. So, uh, good little extendo. Okay. And then, last up, the star of the show tonight, besides you, Lady Ada, our community, our customers, and our team here at Ada Fruit, is this. This is a Mini Pi TFT 1.3 inch. So, in the shop a few months ago, we put in the 1.13 inch, 240 by 135, and this is a 1.3 inch, 240 by 240. So it's actually the same screen that's used in the Clue, and we've had a breakout for this for a few months. So not too surprising that we'd make a little like half bonnet. Um, so this put, fits on a Raspberry Pi. It can work with any Raspberry Pi with a, actually it can even work with the ones that are the two by 13 connectors, but it's, it's just designed and shaped to fit on a Pi Zero, Pi Two, Pi Three, Pi Four, Pi, Pi B. Um, it plugs right on and um, you get a, 240 by 240 screen, which is um, kind of surprisingly nice. Uh, so here's the screen, and I have this a... It's perfect for Pi Zero. Yeah, it is kind of cute. Do stuff with uh, Pi Hole to take a look at all the ads you're blocking. Yeah, so hold on, let me see if I can connect. So I can, uh, you know, LS here, and I can type all sorts of stuff on my keyboard. Um, and this is running a kernel module that makes the terminal appear on it. 
a, you could display a graphical user interface, but it's only 240 by 240, so just be aware that it's not going to be very high resolution. Um, you can definitely play animated GIFs and little videos on it. There's two buttons, uh, 23 and 24. You can use these to go between programs or select stuff. Um, so I can, you know, reboot. Uh, it's a Pi Zero, so it's going to take a little bit of time to reboot, but um, maybe we'll watch it uh, do the boot up process. Um, yeah, you just plug it on, it's fully assembled, and also I have the little uh, SD card extender here as well. So you're wondering, like, hey, what, why is the SD card sticking out? It's because I wanted to uh, show that as well. But these screens are really nice, they're IPS. Um, the backlight is also on a pin, so if you want to turn off the backlight uh, to save power or because you don't want it to be so bright, um, you can do that as well. And uh, I'm trying to think what else. We got, yeah, we've got both a kernel module um, that this is showing off, and we also have a pure Python. Uh, interface for it. So uh, a great little way to add a small screen, uh, very affordable, very cute. Oh, and then um, I forgot, there's one more thing. On the side here, there is a STEM IQT connector. So for example, you want to connect that DAC or you want to connect um, one of our like uh, sensors to it, you can plug this cable in, sold separately, and then uh, this can connect to yeah, one That's of handy. our STEMIQT connector it's a theme. sensors right here. Every, so, yeah, we're putting STEM as a you know, connector and everything. So. so very handy for any kind of I2C connection. Uh, if this is a sensor especially, you could have this have a humidity or temperature. Uh, you could put it far away and then half the data graph on your Raspberry Pi. All right, All right. and with that, it is new products. Yay! All right, let's...